Hello everyone, my name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence On Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking to the cast of Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. This film is about a tech billionaire, Miles Braun, who invites his friends for a getaway on a private Greek island. When someone turns up dead, Detective Benoit is put to the case. So here to talk about the film and what fans can expect are the cast of Glass Onion. Very, very early on in when we were making Knives Out, I remember being on set with Daniel and um, just really enjoying the working relationship, enjoying how the whole cast was feeling and just um, talking with him about how if this thing works, it would be really fun to do more of these. Um, the thing is we had no idea if it was, was gonna work. When I was writing it, um, I actually, even like you know, good friends of mine who I usually show my scripts to, even, they, even if they enjoyed the script, they were kind of like, you know, sure you want to do like just a who done it next like and so I, I i really didn't know how much um if there was going to be an audience for uh going back to this form and so i was really delighted when there was and and uh the idea that we could then make more of them we just sprung on it. the first script was a laugh out loud a laugh out loud funny to read and this one was and uh, you know there wasn't it was a no-brainer really. Just to, just to come and work with him again, and also to get to work with, uh, we had such an, an amazing cast in the last one, and you know I thought how we were going to top that, but we 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 you know we've equaled it. I'd say my my two primary reasons were uh, Ryan Johnson and Ryan Johnson. <laughs> um, I, I love Ryan's stuff. I really, I always have. I I love him as a person. I've known him a long time, and. Um, um, I just think he's, he's just sharp. He's sharp, sharp, sharp. And I like, I, I love people who love movies as much as Ryan does. And I love people who love genre as much as Ryan does. And I think he's deeply, deeply, he's a deep lover, aficionado student of, mis of mystery writing, mystery films. Um, we both love noir films, you know, like he was one of the people who ran up to me when I made Motherless Brooklyn and was so excited. And he, he just, um, he was someone I, I uh, he was on the short list of like, if he calls me up, uh, you know, whatever it is, sort of sight unseen, I'm in. I was a big fan of the first Knives Out and Ryan Johnson's work. I saw Looper and I was blown away. I was like, this is something that I would have written. This is something that I absolutely am like blown away watching. And if I ever get an opportunity to work with this director, I'm saying yes. And when he called me and had told me he had seen my short film for um, my album, Dirty Computer, and you know all the work I had done, and he had a role for me in this, I was like, I had said yes before I even read it. And then when I read it, I was just, I was blown away. I was blown away. How to work out a mystery when you're writing. I mean, I think, well, the first thing is uh, priority wise to remember that the mystery is not going to be what keeps an audience in their seats. And to remember first and foremost that you're making a movie and that it has to dramatically work before it intellectually works as a puzzle. I would, the phrase I've used before is it has to be not a crossword puzzle, it has to be a roller coaster. You have to remember that's what it has to be for the audience. So dramatically that means you gotta have somebody the audience cares about, they gotta be in danger, you gotta want them to get out of it by the end, and the ending has to be emotionally satisfying and not just intellectually satisfying in terms of, aha, that person did it. Um, so that's first and foremost, and that's actually still the hard part, is creating a good story that feels unique and feels exciting and emotionally feels satisfying at the end. Infinitely harder than figuring out a, a mystery and planting clues and kind of making that whole thing work. Ryan really wants people to enjoy this movie, you know, it, to, to actually go on the roller coaster, be on the ride, enjoy it, don't think too, don't try to think too hard. And 
And at the same time, I think what's great, what's so brilliant about Ryan's writing is yes, absolutely. I think there's a lot of things that are being said in this movie that when you go back and you decide after you've enjoyed the ride, you're like, you know what? I kind of want to watch that movie again. The thing that delighted me the most was that within a totally entertaining uh, piece, he, he chose, the things that he chose to stick a fork in a little bit are, are absolutely perfect for the moment that we're in. And I like, I've always liked anything that has a feeling for, for the zeitgeist, for the moment that you're living in, because I think people, I think one of the things people get most out of going to the movies is seeing, seeing things reflected where they see themselves within it, right? Or their own time or their whatever. It, it adds a certain, even in comedy, even in, you know, a mystery, I think if people can, if people can feel that it's of their moment, then it has a, sp a certain special zest to it. There's a couple of double bluffs that Ryan puts into the film. Um, uh, as I just said, he sort of turns the tables, literally turns the table over on, 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 on the direction the movie's going. So that sort of, the first one is, is very much about sort of the fun of, um, yeah, it's a tricky one. It's like Benoit is being, he's exposing someone, but he's trying not to be cruel. He's trying not to be hurtful, um, yet he's being serious. And it's, it's a sort of, it's a sort of tricky line to walk to try and kind of get that feeling of that, you know, he's a, one of his things is that he appears to be sort of bumbling and, you know, not really on it, but he is. Working with Daniel was just a dream. I was obviously a fan of all his work, from the Bond stuff to everything he had done up to date. And uh, watching him in the first Nice Out, like the accent change, just what he transformed to be was just amazing. Like, I was, I was it's so impressed um, by him as an actor. And so when I got an opportunity to, you know, work with him, I was like, hell yes. And I learned so much from him. The desire to do another mystery movie with, with Daniel as Benoit, that was it actually started way, way back at the beginning. And so I always knew that if this was something that worked, it'd be fun to keep doing them. And um, so what excited me about doing another one, it, it was partially just kind of wanting to dive in and figure out another mystery. They're just really, really fun to write. It was partially uh, just the idea of getting another really great group of fun actors together, going someplace exciting and hanging out with Daniel and all of them again. Uh, I thought that would just be a blast. Miles is, I think, a person who's very convinced that he's the center of not only his own story, but pretty much everyone else's story um, and the world's story. Um, to say that Miles has conviction in his own importance would be uh, an understatement. <laughs> what, what Ryan's very terrific at doing is no everybody's everybody he writes is superficially one thing but then has some sort of a layer of the real under them and miles i think that miles is um miles is affection and his sentiment and his uh, love of his friends it is sort of opens up the, your a soft spot um, for you, I hope, in him, despite his, um, his uh, let's say, more egotistical characteristics. Watching Ed, um, sort of this character of Miles come out of Ed, um, it was, it, 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 so much of acting is just reacting. Um, and, and, and for me, that, again, you know, with Ed being so great and wonderful at what he does, it was a sort of easy job for me to just sort of just bounce off him. Andy, Andy is, um a tech entrepreneur and very smart, uh, very witty, uh, a genius, honestly, and a gatherer. Brings a lot of people together and makes shit happen. She's an immensely talented human being. Um, so um, how lucky we were to get her to do this film. Um, but. Our relationship so important. I was very relieved that it, it was working off the bat. So uh, you can't make these things happen. They just they're either going to happen or they're not. And um, Janelle is, um, as I said, so talented and so committed, and also you know just 
takes her craft very seriously. So, and I, for me, that's, that makes my job easy. Lionel's a, a scientist at this company that's run by a, a dear friend of his. And um, it's just, it's that thing that can sometimes happen in, when the personal and professional lines cross. When um, I think Lionel is, you know, it's probably time for him to move on but the personal ties that he has with Miles and the ways that he feels taken advantage of and the ways that he feels manipulated, um, you know, kind of uh, are at odds with his professional ambition. And so as he's coming in fraught with, uh, you know, there are, there are both personal and professional things that he's dissatisfied with and he's trying to, you know, find his own voice to say these things. Um, so yeah, he, he's coming in with a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on inside him. I love him so much, Leslie Odom Jr. Leslie Odom Jr. and I also had been working in, as husband and wife in an animated show called Central Park, um, in which we sing together um, and act together. And we had been doing that for like a couple, maybe a year and a half beforehand and had never really, you know, an animation, you never really meet the people that you're working with. So this was the first time that we had actually, even though we had been, I was like, ah. So it was a, a dream, a dream to work with him. He is a peach. Birdie is bored. You find her very bored in her pod. Um, Birdie's a fashionista. She's a, a, you know, a totally tone deaf girl who is, um, she has a, a she was a, a sort of a model, but was she really? She worked at a magazine. She, you know, sort of considered like a socialite fashionista party girl. And that's really all I can say about Birdie. She's doesn't even realize how ridiculous she is at times. Um, so it made for a really fun time for me because I got to say the most insane, fun, funny lines. Clara DiBella is a governor of this lovely state of Connecticut. And she, at the beginning, is um, in her, in the throes of a campaign for senator. Um, she is at home, like uh, a, in the beginning of the pandemic, um, like everybody trying to juggle family, life, and work. There's no one I laugh with more than Katherine Hahn. And it was like that on set. I mean, we'd sit in the green room and we would start to go and it was just like, we just laughed our asses off. So of course, every time she showed up on set with a new beige outfit, I just laughed. I know, I mean, I'm sure, I know I can laugh. It's like, I'm not laughing at you, but I'm, but I am, but I am because that's what we wanted to, that's the, that's, that was the goal. <laughs> Jenny Egan, our costume designer, in terms was uh, brilliant in terms of kind of finding who we were through the costume within the kind of um, I guess the instrument that each character is in the orchestra of this the score of this piece, like the first one. Like everyone is definitely has its own. Every person has their own note that they're playing, and so we have a, had a lot of flexibility to in, within that. I really had to embrace the fact that it was beige. All beige, all the time. A lot, I was, I had to, I looked, I, w I went in for the first fitting with Jenny and I was like, <gasps> okay. Cause I saw Kate's rack, saw Janelle's rack, and then I saw Claire's rack. And I was like, okay, it's gonna be a lot of cork wedges. I felt like, you know, that, you know, in, in Knives Out, the first one, we, um, Benoit was only staying for a night. He only was going for 24 hours. And so he kind of didn't really, you know, he threw some clothes in a bag and trained up to, took me a cellar up to Boston and, and that was it. So he doesn't, we don't really see what he, but I always felt that he had a kind of, he cared about what he looked like. Knowing that fashion was this, uh was this thing that people responded to the first time. You know, so, oh, okay, you guys like that. Well, let's, you know, let's give that some care um, with this film. So, yeah, so about that, Ryan and I talked about, and Jenny and I talked about, Lionel um, not being this sort of cliche 
80s or 90s version or even earlier you know version of a scientist that's you know lab coat nerdy poindexter you know kind of guy that um that we live in a time where really it's about bringing yourself to work i mean look at all these guys around you know girls working around here you know it's about you know bringing your cultural specificity bringing whoever you are to the spaces that you inhabit the clothes for me were so important working with jenny and collaborating with her and the team was also really wonderful because jenny is a great collaborator and also a great like has great style and knew this character up and down i feel like our first fitting i picked all the outfits that i was going to do for the film like it took just like that one fitting and the majority of things that she showed me and when she listened to me on like what I felt like Andy would be wearing, she delivered on that. And I didn't have much like, I didn't worry anymore. You know, also you feel more comfortable in your character when you know the clothing is gonna be right. Jenny really created the looks and brought these beautiful prints to the, to the first fitting and had all these great ideas and then you know, we crafted the things, like I know my body and what feels good and the kinds of things that I'd have to be doing. And she was really collaborative and wanting to, you know, hear me out. Ryan is um, the best of, he's the best combination of qualities. He, he's supremely confident and in control of what he's doing. He's, he's well, deeply prepared, um, but he's incredibly relaxed. He's like, He's a very almost disarmingly relaxed personality who doesn't overmanage. He loves actors. You you always feel him put covering his mouth and turning away in laughter. And it and in a weird way, it's it, it gives you this great feeling. Like you you can tell he gets pleasure out of it. He gets pleasure out of actors. He's he's hoping you'll surprise him. What I admire most about Ryan is that he puts people first. Not, you know, what we can do as actors or talent. Or, it was like, he genuinely cared about me. From the moment we talked, I felt like this is a person that cares about people. And because all of us felt that, that energy allowed us to come into work and give our all. There's no one kinder than Ryan. He, he loves to connect with people. He loves to make you feel comfortable and and he loves to hear your ideas and so you feel like you're a part of the the journey with him uh, and then on as an actor you just you know you're in such safe hands he's so confident in his material as a writer and in his vision as a director and you know he he's so clear in his communication he really he really is a special person to to work for and um, and so that leaves all of us crazy folks uh, to have fun, to actually enjoy what, what we're doing. He wanted to meet me before I read it. He said, I'm gonna send it to you, but I want you to know that he's not there yet. You know, um, I know that. And so I'm looking to collaborate with somebody. Um, I'm looking to, to build Lionel with somebody who, who wants to jump in. And so I read it knowing that. I read it, you know, um, I loved the script. And I had some ideas about, um, without changing a word of dialogue, I just had some ideas about how we might help Lionel pop and bring some value to his presence. And um, thank goodness Ryan agreed, you know, or just, you know, liked some of the ideas and we said, let's do it. If something's really, if you do ensemble work and it's really working, it, it feels like a theater troupe, you know what I mean? It's like, if you come from theater, which I did, it's, it's it's delightful. It's it's um, in this case, in this case, a lot of different people have to have chemistry with each other. With you know, there's multiple combinations, uh, and then there's the group as a whole. And fortunately, um, partly because of the humor Ryan injecting these, but also it's just you know everyone in the group I think um, had a slice of clown in them, and I think and I think. It, it ended up being like one of those circus cars where the clowns keep piling out of it. Um, <laughs> day after day was just a lot of laughter. We were really all in it together. This cast, a lot of us also had had, we had known each other before. I mean, I, Catherine and I, you know, we go way back to How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Leslie Odom Jr. I've worked with before. 
Uh, Edward I've known for many years. Like there was a, you know, Janelle I had met, but then we were, I was so excited to get to know her, you know, and, and bond with her. But we really did bond. But again, that that's all Ryan. I mean, the, and, and Daniel, these things start from the top and they trickle down into the new cast. And when you let people enjoy themselves, then we're gonna enjoy ourselves. And if you know that there's no room for really large ego, then people aren't gonna play that card ever. And so you get kind of the purest form of who your fellow actor is, I think. We were together a lot. Um, just for, you know, to, to save time and just because that's the way that it was on this particular location, that's very rare for a film. So we, we actually, we spent a lot of time together and um, that was another gift of this movie. Um, the generosity, the, the spirit of generosity that flowed among us and um, the way we really became a, a little ensemble is very special to me. I, I hold that dear to my heart. I had the time of my life with this cast. We were, we became family by the end of, by the end of the shoot. Really by the first week, we were family. It was honestly the things that we did outside of filming that really stuck with me the most. And I think it also made our scenes together feel super like easy and just um, fun and lighthearted and you know, because we spent so much time off screen together. Like we played murder mystery games and we're in the middle of shooting a murder mystery film, but we did it just because we loved, you know, interacting with each other outside of, of work. It didn't even feel like work. It's, it's, yeah. So now I'm like spoiled. I'm like, please, my next, you know, jobs, if I'm lucky enough to continue to keep working in this business, I want to make sure that the culture feels like the one that Ryan Johnson cultivated. The title, Glass Onion, uh, it's, it, I mean, when you see the film, you'll see it's got many different connections to it. It's, there's a literal connection in terms of it being the name of this bar that the characters all hung out at. It's then years later, Miles Braun builds his kind of like glass castle on this remote island and calls it the Glass Onion. Um, and it's also something that because Benoit Blanc loves his overwrought metaphors, it's something he grabs onto and, and beats to death. Uh, so yeah, it has many different meanings through the course of it. Um, and Glass Onion's connection to Knives Out, it's, it's the same as Death on the Nile's connection to Murder on the Orient Express or, or what have you, name any two of her books. Um, it's the same detective. It's hopefully gonna scratch the same itch in terms of the pleasures of the movie, but it's another case in Benoit Blanc's uh, hopefully long list of cases. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to the cast of Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, talk about the film. The film is currently in its worldwide release and will be available streaming on Netflix starting December 23rd. So make sure you go and check it out. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts and head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe so you're updated on all of our video content.